What's up, guys, and welcome to this question. We're doing question one of the 2017 uh, final exam. This is the last question I'll be doing. Uh, I've done all the other questions, and the videos should be up. Um, yeah, so if you haven't seen that, check that out. Um, I'm doing this last because I recommend that even you guys do this question, this section last, because it is designed to trick you sometimes and um, test your knowledge. So doing it last may help. Okay, so anyways, with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so question 1.1 says, which set of physical quantities consists of only vectors? Okay, so we're looking for vectors only. And the easiest way to do this sometimes is to pick out the scalars. Okay, so I can see velocity is a vector, but time is a scalar, so A can be gone. Uh, momentum is a vector and electric field is a vector. I'm going to leave that. B is a possibility. Acceleration is a vector. Speed is a scalar. So C goes out. Work is a scalar. So D goes out. So we're left with question 1.1 1 .1, uh, B. Okay. The velocity versus uh, time graph for the motion of a car on a straight road is shown in the diagram. Assume that the car starts at zero at t equals zero. Okay, so at which time is the car the greatest distance from the origin? Okay, so when we're speaking about distance, we're speaking about displacement. Okay, uh, as well. Okay, so uh, we have a velocity time graph, and so we're concerned about the area. So the area under the graph is equal to our displacement. Okay, so here we have a positive area which means that we are going, say, let's say we draw a car, nice car, that means that we're going in the positive direction. We've done a certain distance in the positive direction. We can calculate it if we wanted to, but that's not part of the question. Once we get here, velocity equals zero means that the car has stopped at some distance. Stopped. Okay, and then when we get into the negative area, it means that we're now going backwards I'm going backwards okay but from the graph it's clear to me that the positive area is greater than the negative area okay so that means he goes backwards for less distance so he'll end up somewhere in the middle or somewhere there but that means uh, at which time is the car the furthest distance it would be when he stops when he's the furthest distance because after that he comes back so I would say it's at uh, five seconds which would be option C, so 1.2 is C. Okay, then question 1.3. An object moves along a horizontal line with increasing speed. Uh, which of the following best describes the velocity and acceleration of the object? Okay, so it's increasing speed. So let's speak about velocity. Let's go through each option and then decide uh, which one it is. So if we have a positive velocity, with a zero acceleration, that means that what we actually have is constant. Uh, for zero acceleration, that means we have a constant velocity. Um, so the speed cannot be increasing if we have a constant velocity, so A goes out the window. If we have a positive velocity and we have a negative acceleration, it means the car is slowing down. So that can't be the case because we have increasing speed. If we have a negative velocity, it means the negative just indicates direction. So it means we're going in the negative direction. And then we have a positive acceleration. So again, it's slowing down. Okay, so that's not an option. So we're only left with D, but let's just check D. We have a negative, so let's say positive is that way, is the positive direction. So we have a negative velocity and a negative acceleration. So that means the car is speeding up over time. So the answer would be D. So 1.3, the answer is D. Okay, cool stuff. Okay, looking at question 1.4, a student weighing 500 newtons stand on a scale in an elevator moving downwards. Uh, when the scale reads 520 newtons, uh, the elevator must be increasing in speed decreasing in speed moving okay so let's see so we have a scale uh, with the person standing on it and it's moving downwards okay so 
let's see what the free body for this looks like for the scale. So this is the free body diagram for the scale. We would have this being the normal force. We have a weight and this is the symbol for acceleration. That's not a smiley face, but it's an arrow. Okay, mass times acceleration and downwards is positive. Okay, so I'm going to do the sum of the forces. Um, let's see, I'm going to take upwards as positive equals mass. No, I'm going to take downwards as positive. Positive is equal to mass times acceleration downwards as being positive. So what we have is weight minus the normal force equals mass times acceleration. So remember the scale is reading the normal force is equal to mass times acceleration minus weight. Okay, so... Let's see okay so what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these scenarios okay i'm going to start with the constant speed because then for option c our normal force equals mass times the acceleration of zero minus 500 so the normal force is minus 500 so that's immediately wrong okay so that can't be the case Okay, if it is accelerating downwards, then what we have, the normal force is equal to, the acceleration is downwards, so it's some positive value. Okay, uh, so some positive value. Uh, let's say, let's just do it in symbol. So we have a positive value minus 500. Okay, so I'm just going to say positive value minus 500 so that means the normal force is somewhere greater than normal force is somewhere greater than minus 500 okay so that could be an option uh oh no it actually can't be because we want it less than m less than 520 so we're looking for value of the normal force less than minus 520 okay the minus is just the direction okay so it can't be um let's see what did we use positive acceleration accelerating downwards so that is d so it can't be d so let's look at a if we have a increasing in speed okay so increasing in speed is the same thing as saying that it is got a accelerating downwards so that can't be the option once again so let's look at b uh, so b okay so this is the same and b our normal force is equal to some negative value minus 500 and in this case our normal force is less than 500 and it would probably read uh, minus 520 which would be our scenario so the answer to this question for 1.4 is b okay cool stuff oh, i'm going to need some space so let me just get rid of that Okay, so question 1.5. A block rests on an inclined rough surface that makes an angle. Okay, so the block remains at rest as theta is slowly increased, which is the best description of how the magnitude of the normal force and the frictional force uh, basically change with regards to theta. So I'm going to start off by drawing a free body diagram. We know there's friction. We know that there is a normal force, and we know that there is a weight. We also know that this is on a slope with an angle of theta, and so there are going to be two components, a perpendicular component and a parallel component. Okay, so I'm going to uh, write out uh, equations. So some of the forces um, I'm going to take, let's see, downwards as being positive equals zero because it's at rest and not moving. So some of the forces downwards. So what we're going to have is, well, not downwards rather, but in the direction of the normal force. So that way. So what we're going to have is this component here, which is mg cos theta is equal to the only force acting in that this direction is the normal force is equal or minus the normal force equals zero so the normal force is equal to mg cos theta okay now i'm going to be worried about the forces acting in this direction 
so I'm going to say sum of the forces in that direction is equal to zero once again. So what I have is downwards is positive, so I've got mg sine theta minus force friction is equal to zero. I'm going to rewrite that equals mg sine theta. Okay, so now what does a cos graph look like? Cos graph looks uh, something like this. What does a sine graph look like? Sine graphs look something like this. Okay, so as I increase theta, let's say I'm here and I increase theta to this position, or let's yeah, increase theta to let's say here, what's happening to the value? The normal force cos theta goes down, so the normal force goes down. So I'm looking for where the normal force decreases, so either B and D. Okay. If we start sine theta here and we increase theta, we get an increase in the value, so the force friction goes up. So I'm looking for where the force friction goes up. So this one here, D. So 1.5, the answer is D. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Basically, I took the sum of the forces in the given directions and then just used a bit of maths to understand what's happening. Okay, so... A collision of two blocks takes place along a frictionless horizontal surface. A block of mass m1 equals 3 kilograms moves to the right with a speed of 5 meters per second and collides with a block of mass m2, uh, which is equal to 5 kilograms, which was initially moving to the left with a speed of 2 meters per second. After colliding, the block of mass m1 moves to the left with a speed of 1 meter per a second okay well lots of information okay so this question could probably be done using um, all the values which are given and using impulse and collisions and all that nice stuff but i'm going to try and figure it out just using the equations i have available to me okay so what are we looking for which block experienced the larger magnitude of acceleration during the collision so we're looking for the larger magnitude um, of the collision. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Okay, so first, let's see. I go to my formula sheet, and I'm looking for momentum and impulse and all that good stuff. And I'm going to use the second equation, F net equals uh, change in P, change in T. And remember, the impulse is the same for both. Okay, so the impulse for the same, or for the, for the two things are the same. So I'm going to start off with F net is equal to, okay, I also know that F net equals uh, change in P over change in T. Okay, so the force also is the same uh, for both of these. Okay, because the time period is the same, so they experience the same force. Okay, so if they experience the same force, I can also say that the mass times the acceleration, because we know that F net equals MA, is equals to change in P over change in T. Okay, and now I can just manipulate this to get acceleration equals change in P over change in T times 1 over mass. Okay, so what I can see is that as mass increases so as the mass increases the acceleration will decrease because we're dividing by mass on the right hand side okay so the bigger the mass okay well we want the larger acceleration so the smaller the mass the bigger the acceleration so we're looking for which one has the smaller mass which is the three kilograms so the answer is a okay so question 1.6 is a okay cool stuff okay moving on to question 1.7 another nice question a person throws an object of mass m straight up with an initial velocity v the object rises to a maximum height h above the launch point the person now throws an object of mass half m straight up with a speed of 2v in terms of h 
to what maximum height does the object rise above the launch point? Okay, so we working with objects in free fall, so we know we're working with UVATS, okay? And we have, let's say, this is point, okay, so let's do it for um, the initial point and the maximum point, the maximum height is going to be the final point. Okay, so first I'm going to do it for mass equals m. Okay, so u, v, a, t, s. Okay, my u looks like a v, u, v, a, t, s. Okay, so the initial velocity for the mass m is equal to v. The final velocity is zero at its maximum height. The acceleration is minus g. Okay, I'm taking upwards as being positive. The time is an unknown, and h is also an unknown. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. And then I'm going to do the second scenario for mass is equal to a half m. Okay, and I'm going to say u, v, a, t, s. u, again, is equal to 2v this time, given in the question. The velocity final is going to be zero. The acceleration is minus g once again. And again, I'm taking upwards as positive. Time is unknown. S is unknown and is what I'm looking for. So first things first, I am going to figure out what I'm going to figure out what h is in terms of the other variables. How am I going to do this? I can use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So we have v, not v, but 0 squared minus u, which is v squared over minus 2g is equal to s, which is equal to h. So I'm going to say that h equals v squared over 2g. Okay, so that's my one equation. So now I know what h is. Now I'm going to figure out this side. I'm going to use the same process. I'm going to look for the displacement. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. 0 squared equals... Um, okay, now 0 squared minus... Uh, this time it was 2v squared. I put that in brackets on purpose because I need to square the entire uh, initial velocity over minus 2g, once again, is equal to s, okay? Then I'm going to multiply out the top. So I'm going to get 4v squared over 2g is equal to s. Now what I'm going to look for is this pattern right here. So this whole thing, that whole part is h. Okay, so I'm left with s is equal to 4h. Now the question is, is that one of our options? And 1.7a is the first option. So 1.7 can be written as a. Okay, cool stuff. And we go on. Okay, question 1.8. Two-point charges of 3q and minus q are fixed on the x-axis in otherwise empty space, as shown. In which region slash regions is there a point on the x-axis where the electric field is equal to zero? Okay, quite a nice question. So I am going to make this into my own diagram, and I'm going to start by drawing a nice circle around this. So that represents my positive 3q, and that's my negative 3q. Now I'm going to draw some arrows. Okay, so electric fields are defined in the direction that a positive point charge would move. So a positive point charge would move away in this case. And remember, this is 3q, okay? so it's much stronger. So everything's moving away for this. And for this, it's moving into it. But because it's weaker, I'm going to draw a couple. Okay, so let's see. Um, so if I put a positive point charge right here, the force that I'm experiencing is that way. So region 1 is not an option. If oh no, region 2 is not an option. In region 2, in region 2, it will always move to the right. Okay, let's look at region 1. Okay, if I put it into region 1, I've got a very strong 3, um, 3 Q force pushing me away. And a very weak minus Q pulling me. So 
this three two is going to win so i'm always going to move left so region three is not an option and as a result the last option is not an option either so d is not an option but let's just check region region three is sorry so region one is not an option and that's here as well so d is not an option so i'm left with c but let's see what happens if we put a point charge here i've got a very strong three two pulling me that way okay and because i'm closer so let me actually put this closer if i put a point very close to minus q i've got an equally strong force pulling me in the opposite direction so there is a point where there's no the electric field is equal to zero and that is c so question 1.8 the answer is c okay in the circuit below all the bulbs are identical which bulb will be the brightest okay so which bulb will be the brightest let's see if we use kirchhoff's current law so Kirchhoff's current law says that the current splits, right? So we have uh, positive and negative. So the current is going like this. The current splits here. So let's say I splits to I1 and I2. And I1 plus I2 is equal to I... No, I, let's call this I0. Is equal to I0. Okay, so I0 is the greatest current. So these two experience the same brightness, and D experiences a brightness of I2. But when we come on this side, remember they all have the same identical resistance R. Okay, so on this side, for A, the current going through A is the largest. I has the greatest current. Uh, going through it so it's going to be the brightest because it experiences i naught okay so current through a is i naught which is greater than i and is greater than i2 so uh, we can say question 1.9 the answer would be a okay and i'm happy with that um yeah so we used kirchhoff's current law to get that Okay, two circuits two circuits are shown in the diagram. The resistance in the outer circuit is decreasing. R outer is decreasing at a constant rate. In which direction is the magnetic field at point P? And in which direction is the conventional current through the resistor? Okay, so we have a current carrying conductor going like this. Okay, it's also changing. So the reason why we've been given that the rate is changing is because we need... Uh, the current is changing through it, okay? Because V equals IR. So as uh, R decreases, the voltage is staying the same, so our current is changing, okay? So if we use our left right, right hand uh, and we put our thumb in the direction of the current, so in the direction of the current, three, four, as you can see, my art's very good and then curl our hand so the direction of the magnetic field is going to be up or out of the page at P. So basically my hand is here, okay? And it's coming up, my fingers are curling upwards. Okay, so out of the page, so we're left with option C and D. And then we want to know, in, if we look at, so that means that means on this side the magnetic field is into page okay so for the current uh, on the inside for the inside um, for the inside wire we can say that our fingers must now point like this with it downwards so our fingers are into the page okay into the page on the top and out of the page at the bottom. So the current must be going from Y to X. And that's an option, option D. So option D. So 1 point, must be 10, must be the last question, 1.10. The answer is D. Okay, cool stuff, guys. I hope you found this useful. Um, I hope I'm explaining everything and it's easy to understand my explanation. So yeah, that's the end of that, and I'll be moving on to a different paper. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.